reaching out. We've got a very interesting presentation lined up for you today. We're going to talk to you about how bullying destroys our connection to God's kingdom. Sometimes we take bullying for granted. It's, uh, uh, we think it's just something that was developed in the last 10 years or 20 years or last week. However, it's been around since Genesis. Abel in the Old Testament, the second son of Adam and Eve, who was slain by his older brother Cain, offered the Lord his firstborn. The Lord respected Abel's sacrifice, but did not respect that offered by Cain. In a jealous rage, Cain murdered Abel. That's bullying. What have we seen in the United States as well as around the world? We've seen buildings burned. We've seen things destroyed. It's bullying. One bully is trying to outdo the other bully, and as a result, we have seen many, many things happen that should not have happened. Bullying is intentional, and I'm going to give you a definition. Bullying is intentional and tries to cause harm or distress to the victim. Bullying occurs between two people or people groups who have different degrees of power. One trying to gain hold over the other one. Bullying can happen repeatedly. 65% of all the people have experienced bullying in the world. It's probably closer to 100% if the truth be known. The bully must have control and the bully must yield to that control or it won't stop. They have a personal and self-serving agenda. A common thing is I'll have it my way. Here's how you recognize people to that are going to start bullying somebody. People are saying this. People that are basically rude. People that insist on getting their own way. People that feel they need to coerce. People that will gang up on each other. People that will threaten people. If you don't do it my way, I will. You should do it this way. Why don't you do it my way? Why wouldn't you do it? If you wore this, you'd, you'd look better. When will you get the house clean? All forms of intimidation. All forms of intimidation. Just plain being mean, name calling, attacking character. Bullying is epidemic in our society. The spirit that has been implementing expert recommendations and mandating them by law. Universal love doesn't exist, ex extend to practices of religion. We see that now. There is absolutely, they are cutting off the churches. There is no love shown to anybody. The bullies are in charge. The pandemic is bullying the church and the church is bullying back. There's a lot of churches that are angry, bitter, cursing, and condemning everybody from the politicians to the people that burn the buildings. The solution for a better life is found in the Sermon on the Mount. In Joshua 1 8, it says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, nor shall you, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do it according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The Sermon on the Mount describes that. Christians don't generally recognize it as the solution to bullying. But the solution can be identified in that passage, which begins by acknowledging the suffering of the downtrodden and encouraging them to follow his instructions which will enable them to inherit the earth. In other words, it is the way for the powerless to become powerful. You know, Richard once said it this way. He says, what are they going to do to me? Kill me? I'll go to be with the Lord. Nobody can hurt me. <clears throat> they can destroy the flesh, but they can't hurt me. Treat others the way you want to be treated. If you love only those who love you, what's commendable about that? Thugs do that. If you're only friendly with your friends, it's, it's easy to love our friends. What's acceptable about that? What's Christian about that? Everybody does that. We're all friendly to the people that we drink with. We're all friendly to the people that we're out carousing with. 
But you see, we need to become friends to this world, not in the sense of involving ourselves in it, but we need to be the light in the world. One thing we want to say, I want to say this again and I'll say it again. Don't let the bullying that's going on in the world take your light out. Shut your light off. Don't let it happen. We've got to keep our light burning Amen. in spite of what's going on around us, in spite of how we feel. Amen. Man, I can tell you, I quit every day, but I have to go and beat my head on the wall, get straightened out, and get back to work. We should never let our lights go out. Well, <clears throat> Jesus didn't teach us that the bully needed to change. It is irrational to expect people, think of this, it is very irrational to expect people to stop engaging in bullying because we passed a law. Thou shalt stop bullying came from Washington. It doesn't mean anything, folks. It has to start with us. Yes. It has to start in here. That's a tough one to say, but it's not going to start out there. And we can't pass a law to make it happen. Jesus knew that, so he put the solution on us. We can understand that human authorities cannot solve our problems. He knew that changing the other person will never change us. We will still feel bullied. We will still feel bullied. Anti-bullyism teaches that we need to fight for anti-bullying laws as though those laws can force others to it, like us. You know, all the laws in Washington ain't gonna make somebody like you better. And we're seeing it. All the laws we have passed, we're seeing it. All the things going on, we're seeing it. It doesn't make any difference what race we are, don't make any difference what, what uh, religion we are, don't make any difference what nationality we are. Somebody hates somebody, they're bullying. Somebody's calling somebody names, they're bullying. Somebody's referring to those people, they're bullying. It is a it's a pandemic far greater than the co-virus thing will ever be. In Matthew 5, 12, it says, He taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed be the merciful, for they shall find mercy. Bless the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Bless the peacemakers, for they shall become the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted on account of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are ye when you, they may reproach and pers persecute you and say every wicked thing about you, lying. Rejoice and exult, for your reward is great in heaven. <clears throat> for thus have they persecuted the prophets who went before you. Nowhere did Jesus tell us in the Sermon on the Mount that blessed are those that pass laws and tell people to stop bullying you. Now there is a revelation. That is something to think about. That is something to think about. We need to become Christ-like. What happened on what happened on the cross? Jesus said, Father, forgive them. We need to forgive those bullies. It doesn't mean we tolerate violence and that type of thing. You've got to deal with some of that stuff. But we don't have to hate. We don't have to get angry. We don't have to get bitter. Like Pastor Mike Smith said, said we will rebuild, we will prevail, and God will God will reign over St. Paul. Amen, amen, amen. And he's talking to everybody on the street. We need to recognize that. And that is what's important. He's talking to the black people, to the white people, to the Asian people, to every nationality there is. We are human beings in the same boat. 
and we need to take a firm stand against this tyranny and bullying that is going on. It doesn't do us any good to, to fight back. Here's a perfect example. If you were to take somebody in, into court and sue them and go through a <coughs> bitter battle, and some of you may have had an ex or something, it didn't make things better. It only made it worse. It only made it worse. Because the judge said, now you've got to do this and you've got to do that. That made everybody feel better? Uh-uh. They feel better from the inside out. If you can't get it inside, then you need to spend time at the altar. You need to spend time with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Because that is where your salvation will come. That is where peace will come. And that's where bullying will stop. It will not stop on the streets. It will stop in your heart. And if everybody on the street <coughs> had the peace of God in them, there would be no bullying. It would disappear. So that's where we need to go, folks. And that's, I'm going to show you a couple more scriptures here. 2 Corinthians 12.10 says, For the sake of Christ, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamity. For when I am weak, I am strong. What are you going to do to me? But what has happened in society, we have gotten so concerned with what the other person is doing, that we miss it. We, we completely miss it. We're always interested in, well, the other guy, well, they did this, they did that. Forget it, that's a form of bullying. Folks, that's a form of bullying. Get over it. Let go of those things. hundred years from now, it won't make any difference anyway. But what you got in your heart will. Because somebody else didn't do what you wanted them to do will not mean anything a hundred years from now. But what you have in your heart will mean a lot. Will mean a lot. So Jesus knew that the bully, that the bullies were not the bullies. They're us. We have the solution, and it's the love of Christ. It's the Word of God. Anti-bullying legislation has only generated more hatred and we have become our own bully. Can you imagine how people would get along and would go to the seat of government and fight for six months to get a bill passed that says it's illegal for you to bully, uh, bully me? How much peace that would make? Just think about that. <clears throat> Wouldn't that make a lot of peace? Two people fighting for six months and then all of a sudden it's all over, and now we got to be peaceful? Come on. That's like fighting a war with somebody, and then, okay, we're going to shut the war off, now we're going to go out and have a picnic? It isn't going to happen, folks. It's got to come out of you. So anyway, we need to be willing to... I want to say this. Sometimes in the churches, we have a... We have a, a <laughs> we have a dogma that say it's got to be this way. If we're going to correct somebody, we need to correct them with compassion. If you don't have compassion in your voice and you don't have love in your voice, don't tell somebody what to do. Don't tell them to clean up their act because you are not you are not exhorting them. You are bullying them. You are threatening them. That's pretty tough preaching, but it really is true. We have to show compassion to the person that does wrong. We have to show compassion to the bully. We have to help bring him up or bring her up from where they're at. We have to elevate them. Oh, all the psychology says we've done this, this, and this, but no, it doesn't have to be psychology. It needs to be human love. It just simply needs to be human love. And sometimes that's, that's hard. In 1 John 2, 9, it says, Whoever says he is in light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Don't hate somebody. Feel their pain. Recognize the pain that they have. Don't be afraid to feel their pain. Sometimes we run at the mouth. We're going like this. But really, we need to be... 
Lord, show me how they feel. Show me what caused this. Show me how I can help them. Show me how I can help these people that have done this and this and this. Go out on the street and say, God, help us rebuild our town. Help us rebuild our stores, our police departments, our post offices, and all the houses. Father, we need your help. We humble ourselves before you. You see, by doing that, you will inherit the earth. You will fulfill what is spoken on the Sermon, sermon on the Mount. You will become part of the solution and no longer a part of the problem. We have made ourselves the problem because we have passed judgment. Matthew 7, 5 says, Judge not, lest you be judged. For whatever judgment you pronounce, that's what's coming back on you. We don't need to go there. It's not what they did to you. It's what you do with what they did. Don't let the devil put your light out. Don't let the spirit of the Antichrist put your light out. Let your light shine. Let the love of God shine through you. Let the peace of God shine through you. Don't be afraid to speak out, but you speak out with love and compassion. Don't be afraid to pray for your enemies, but pray for them with love and compassion for the error that they're in. Don't speak out in judgment. Don't speak out in passing judgment on anything that they're doing. We have way too many people judging what the demonstrators have done around the world. And one bully is pushing one way, and another bully is pushing the other way, and the people are starving in the meantime. I just was reading about a city they were closing up for three weeks. Nothing in, nothing out. What do you think those people are going to eat? What are they going to drink? Who's going to provide police service? Who's going to do any of this stuff? This one bully pushing against the other bully. We need to show those people by love and compassion that there is a better way. We need to show them the way of Christ. You know, there's a real, uh, there's a real interesting statement. You know, the sun will come up tomorrow. And doesn't God let his sun shine equally on everybody? Good and bad alike? Doesn't the rain fall on everybody? Absolutely. It's our responsibility to, to bring creation to fruition. And it's our responsibility to exhibit the love of Christ in all of these issues. Remember, it's not what they do to you. It's what we do with what they do. In Matthew 5.20 it says, For I say unto you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.23 says, If therefore thou should offer thy gift at the altar, there shouldst remember that thy brother has something against thee. Leave your gift before the altar and go and be reconciled, and then come and offer your gift. You want your prayers heard? You want the Lord to hear you? You want the Lord to heal you? You want the Lord to restore your home and everything around you? Then, you need to walk in the love of Christ. You need to walk in the love of Christ. You cannot walk with hatred. If you want to stay connected to the kingdom, you can't walk in anger and bitterness and hatred. You have to walk in love. You have to walk in compassion. You have to walk in compassion, folks. I don't care if somebody does something, does you wrong, you need to go to them and say, I'm sorry. Love forgives first. Love forgives first. That's, a, that's, a, that's in scripture someplace. You know, it's not what they do to you. It's what you do with what they did. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 4, and I want to mention this in passing. Understand that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self. Lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpeaceable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, self-serving, not loving, good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. We need to be lovers of God. We need to bring peace. You know, here's a statement, and I'm not sure who exactly made this statement, but it says, 
Jesus, he said this, Jesus is universal peace. If you believe he is dying, fine. Divine, fine. If you believe he's mortal, fine. If you believe he never even existed, fine. If the wisdom that passed down in his name is the solution, the wisdom passed down in his name is the solution the world is looking for. He isn't called the Prince of Peace for nothing. It really doesn't make what you believe, but really makes a difference is that Jesus Christ brought peace to the world. And if we can love, walk in the love of Christ, we can solve all the issues that we've been dealing with around the world. All the issues of bullying. All the issues of one person putting on another. I want to <clears throat> mention this. In Matthew 6, 9, it's recorded the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, let thy name be sanctified. Let thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done as in heaven, so on earth. Do you think the bullying that's going on is the will of God on planet earth? I don't think so. Give us the day our needed bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Who have you forgiven today? I'll bring it right home. Have you forgiven your parents? Have you forgiven your children? Have you forgiven your ex? Have you forgiven other people in your life? Have you been a peacemaker? Or have you been angry and bitter? You see, bullying didn't start. It didn't start right in this pandemic that has gone on and will go on for a period of time. It didn't start there. It started way back in the garden. It started with Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel because he got mad at him. We can't persist in that bullying technique. We need to go in a spirit of compassion, in a spirit of love, and we need to share it. We need to pray, and I want to pray with uh, the same way that uh, a number of people have prayed. Father, we just ask you right now that for all of us that have been bullied and are bullying other people, we ask that you would just help them. We ask for your forgiveness, that you would help us to forgive every person that we have ever bullied, and we forgive us for being the bully. Lord, help us be an instrument of peace. Help us love with compassion. Help us correct with compassion. Father, we need your help. Lord, we need your help. And Father, help us that our light will not go out, even in the face of these burning buildings and these senseless murders that are going on. Father, we need your help. And Lord, we're going to give you all the praise and the glory. And Father, we pray for those that need food. We pray for those that are starving around the world. We pray for those that, that need healing in their body. Heal those bodies, Father. Even as you heal this lady that I prayed for on the internet, for the people that are listening to this broadcast, heal their body. Just touch them in a way they have never been touched. And Father, we're going to give you all praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. We need to grow beyond our age of bullying. Because bullying is not the answer. The love of Christ is. Father, we thank you for and praise you and give you all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And that is something for us to think about.